Going into the Olympic Games in 2012, I had a lot of confidence from having such a good experience in 2011. I felt a lot of expectation from myself to kind of recreate that magic again. And I think it's just really hard to sustain that really, really high level for such a long time when the peak is just so, so small. I think, I think she went out in the first round. It was really disappointing to, um, to, to miss the final and, and watch the Olympics go down from, you know, a restaurant. That was really hard. If you're gonna be in this sport for a really long time, not every year is gonna be great. And not every year is gonna be awful. And so I look back on 2012 and I just think, it was really average. <laughs> I didn't do terrible. I didn't do great. It was just an, it was just a really average year. And we were missing Boulder. So change was in the wind again. Jamie, and they're super scared of you, and they're shy, but I promise that they would warm up into it. So we are at Cornerstone, my church here in Boulder. My husband and I, Jason, we work with a group of refugee kids. So I totally had no idea what I was volunteering for. I was in college, I was a political science major, and I thought, oh sure, if they're going to help out, you know, some refugee families coming to the United States, I'll see if I can get involved, see if I can parlay it into some school project or something. And it's really turned into this incredible labor of love over eight, seven or eight years of my life. Wow. I know, sorry, that was a little clumsy. Do you guys know how to shuffle? So, <clears throat> So on Sundays, I go to the library and hang out with you guys, right? And we are supposed to do schoolwork, but what do we often do instead of schoolwork? Playing games. We play games instead. <laughs> so last year, the girls played track, or played track. <laughs> I'm clearly like focused on the game and not what I'm saying. Um, but they participated in track. Yeah, tell them what events you guys did, because actually they did, did not ever do any distance I knew anything about. I did hurdles, long jump, and sprint. Yeah, what did you think of the hurdles? We never talked about that. Oops. I was scared to do it. You were scared to do it? You that I don't believe that for a second. You're never scared to do anything. It was so so. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. We had to keep switching back and forth. I am really, like, not doing well over here. Seriously, I don't think they need much help. They school me on this game anyway. Oh, no surprise. All right, Rose wins, and I'm second, and Jamie's third, and Nathame has some catching up to do. All right, do you guys want to play one more time, and then we'll go practice driving? Or do you guys all want to come watch? We can stay down here. You want to stay yeah. down here? She Who wants to go first? first? Really? <laughs> well, she sent us uh, an email in the fall of 12, uh, right after the cross country season had concluded, asking if we could get together and chat. And there was no, I'm um, making any big decisions. We just went and had a cup of coffee together. And she said, I'm looking to make a change in training. I think the, the decision that an athlete makes to move on to a different coach, it's like you graduate from high school and it's time to go to college. And you graduate from college and it's time to get a job. Like, honestly, that's how it felt. To me, I really kind of looked at what the opportunities were out there for me. And I just kept coming back to, there are two people on this planet that know running as well as anyone in the world. And they know me as well as anyone in the world. And I just knew if there was a possibility um, that I could work with Mark and Heather again, that the transition time would be like a minute. We started pretty conservatively and within weeks, she was hitting benchmarks. And we just said, she's done things differently the last few years, but she's not resistant to how we're now going to do them. And, and by March, we said, 
2013 is going to be a really good year. In case you can't do it. All right. Ready? That's really good. One more? I actually think that was five. Okay. It's really, really, really unbelievable. A lot of times I'll be in practice and I kind of have these weird like, oh, pinch me type moments because I'm training with Jenny and Kara and Shalaya and they're all amazing and they're people that I looked up to for so long before I was actually here. That's five, right? I think that's four. It's so funny that we both did this. <laughs> Just getting to see what it is that makes Jenny so successful and she's one of the best women in the entire world at the event that I'm trying to be really good at. So it's really, really kind of an opportunity that defies words to me. If she finishes her career and she's a 403 runner and she makes a couple teams, that's good for most people, but we know that's a failure for Jenny. If we say, what can, what can someone of her talent do over the course of her career, then we, we better do it or come pretty close to it or we think we failed. It probably would be really good for like my personality if I slowed down enough to do yoga once or twice in my life. <laughs> You know, people ask about a lot of different achievements I've had and like what was better or what would you what would you take if you had to choose one? And I just feel really lucky that I don't have to choose. Twenty thirteen was really special because you know, you, you get your lane assignment the night the day of or the night before and I'm in lane one. You don't want lane one. Lane one sucks. <laughs> and I just really tried to make the best of it. And I very early in the race found myself in the lead. And instead of kind of panicking and thinking, no, I, you know, someone else needs to lead, somebody else, or I need to reposition myself or something, I just thought, I belong up here. The scariest thing about leading in a race like that, you're blind, you're totally blind, you have no idea what's going on in the race, you don't know how the race is developing behind you, you don't know if the characters you expect to challenge you are near the front, or if something has happened and someone unexpected is, is taking control right behind you. And so it's exciting, but it's so terrifying to see her just go and, and, and lead it. I mean, go for it. And honestly, like, had it been 50 meters longer, she might have been a two-time gold medalist. So I think that race especially was just so great to see people put their heads together, make a plan for the season, not get cut off on, like, early season stuff, and see it through all the way through to a world silver medal. It was awesome. And then in 2013, she loses the gold to Aragawi, who gets popped for meldonium in 2016. If you're good enough and you're good long enough, someone in your race is going to eventually be suspected of using drugs or, or caught for using drugs. But then, you know, we're all, all athletes right now are looking to the IAAF and looking to WADA and USADA and saying, then what? You know, when we know that athletes are guilty of cheating, then what? And we have not gotten a satisfactory answer to that. And I care a lot, and there's a lot of athletes and a lot of people in the sport that care a lot, but it's got to be people that can do something. I'm absolutely a believer and an endorser that if you're an egregious abuser of drugs, you should serve a lifetime ban. And I think you're a lifetime clean athlete or you're a lifetime cheater, one of the two. There are times when I say, I get arrogant and I say, we can beat him anyway. And then there's times when I say, it feels hopeless and we're gonna do the best we can in our world and when we're done, we'll walk away. On the other half of it is that you can't get trapped in this woe is me attitude. You can't just say, life is so unfair and throw up your hands. I can only control me. And in this moment today, I can only um, really know for sure of my own integrity and of what I put in my body and how hard I'm really testing my own limits in a way that is totally true to the spirit of clean competition. 2015, she had won some big races early in the year. 
had a great tri time trial at home and before the world championships. And we all just knew like, I'm in the best shape of my life. So we go to the world championships in Beijing. It was so exciting to be there and it was back in the Olympic Stadium and it just felt so like meaningful, you know, to like circle back and, and be in that place again. And when I make it all the way to the final, uh, I make it halfway through the final race and uh, 700 meters into the race, um, my the heel of my shoe got um, stepped on and my heel slipped out of my shoe. And I ran with my, sh with my foot still kind of in the shoe for about 100 meters or so. And I'm like clenching with my toes so hard trying to keep my shoe on. And my shoe like flies off into the air. There was a little, there was a, a division in me where I thought like other athletes run without a shoe. This has happened before. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And I'm falling further and further back. And my, my foot, like I could felt my foot really getting chewed up on the track. We go into a lap to go and I'm coming back around and I see, we come back around and I see my, my shoe on the track as we're passing it with like 250 meters left in the race. And I think in a way kind of seeing my shoe like was so tragic and upsetting uh, that it kind of jolted me back into race mode a little bit I think. Uh, and the last 100 meters I, I did kick somebody down. <laughs> And, um, and I went from a hopeful, maybe possible um, medal contender that year to 11th, and that was really hard. That race was unusual in that the medalists have never closed that fast in the last 800 meters. They closed under two minutes. And really that was to my detriment in a way because it was that melee that led to my shoe getting clipped. And so I'm coming through the mix zone and I'm trying to be like as positive as possible and, and be as gracious of a loser as possible. Um, and, and somebody says to me like, well, yes, you lost your shoe, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway because they closed in under two minutes. But I just felt like I didn't deserve that. Like, we don't know how I would have run the last 800 meters. Plus, he did a flying start. So just because I had broken two minutes yet, uh, I just felt like that was really unfair to say, like, oh, well, it's fine. Like, you couldn't have possibly done it anyway. The Rio Olympics. Um, there was, it was not the perfect buildup. It wasn't the perfect season as a whole, um, which I think makes that accomplishment, how she, how she battled and she stayed, um, even like doubting, you know, being feet on the ground in Rio and doubting like, can I do this? In Rio, she was sick. She had a respiratory infection and we were real nervous about that. I think I was probably mostly in denial. Like, I think my coaches were the ones saying like, how can this happen? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. She kept saying to us, I feel okay. I have this cough that I can't get rid of, but I feel okay. But um, it was, yeah, it was really just terrible timing. I remember she did one workout um, just before uh, the rounds began. And Mark said, she, she looks like a 356 runner who swallowed a bug. Because <laughs> she looked fine, but she's just, yeah, just coughing constantly. My little sister had um, given me a note and a gift for every single race. It, it wasn't always easy growing up with her because we could not have been polar opposites growing up. We really grew in different directions not only fighting, but like really, really coming to resent one another. When I left for basic training for the military, I mean, at that point, me and my sister were probably at the lowest point, point of our relationship. I wasn't going to our wedding. And then I really missed her. And I think she was sad she wasn't there. And it was as a result of that, that she and I really, really had like a meaningful connection again. I had gotten like a, just a little bracelet that had a mantra on it. So six months before she left, I called Jason and I was like, okay, I'm doing something for my sister and it is really important and I'm gonna send it to you, but it has to be done in a very specific order. I wrote these letters and they went with this gift and then I numbered each of them. And I said like, Jason, there's no way you can get it wrong. He's like, oh yeah, okay, I'll give it to her right before she leaves um, for and to get in the car, I think, to go to the stadium. It was so, 
It's so funny how it was such a similar race to 2015, where it went out really slow and everybody just kind of was waiting for, for someone to pounce, someone to get antsy, and, and the race took off. I mean, the first, the first 700 meters, you're just thinking nothing, you know, there's nothing to think other than when's it going to get going. And then the third lap, I was thinking, all right, I know they're running, running really hard, but the gap is, the gap's growing. Is the gap too big? And I remember thinking that as she came into the home stretch with one lap to go, I remember thinking, has she left it too late? Is the gap too big? And I'm, of course, I'm screaming at the television. I'm waiting and I'm thinking, I know, I know that with a thousand to go or 800 meters to go, at some point, one of the very, very best people um, is going to get antsy and they're not going to be patient enough and they're going to take off. I know how to run on the edge and I know what it feels like to run as hard as I can knowing how much I have left on the track to cover. Sure enough, 800 meters to go and the top three or four women really take off and I tried to go with their move to an extent but not match it because I, I really knew where the edge was for me and I was on the edge. She was excellent at making the race happen the way she wanted or making her race happen the way she wanted, executed it impeccably, had herself where she wanted to be with 400 to go and three and two and we were just watching the opponents go back and hoping she could hang on for third. And then from 400 to go to 300 to go, that's when it changed. It's like everything just shifted. And she's now, she's after it now. And so I remember coming down and I remember being really excited and, and, and knowing that Hassan was kind of struggling as, as I went by her with about 100 meters to go, maybe a little less. And looking up and being so surprised that Dababa was really suffering and she's coming backwards. And so it's so, so like, oh, there's nothing more delicious in the last 100 meters than watching somebody suffer and knowing that you might get them. And so the last like 30 or 40 meters of the race, I really, really believed that I was gonna beat her. And I was thinking so much about that. She's just gone from six and out of it to a contender. And if she, oh, if she, I wish she had 10 more meters because Dababa was so close. I crossed and I just thought like, oh, I'm finally top three. And then I'm like, then it like descends on me a second later and it's the Olympics. And so it just felt amazing. It wasn't until I was in the mix zone that somebody asked me, you know, how does it feel to be the first American woman to medal this event? And so throughout the, the moments after the finish line, more and more of the significance of that achievement kept kind of hitting me and descending on me. And it was just a really, really special night. It's a very strangely exciting and yet lonely feeling on the track because you've achieved this great thing and there's you know, living rooms of people erupting all over the country who are cheering for you. But you're like all alone on the track. You're just standing there like, ah, and looking around and like no one's coming out to you because you're on the track, you know? And I was kind of teased afterwards that I took the longest victory lap ever. Um, but the reason that I took such a long, long time around the track is because um, the third note that Emily gave to me was all about just enjoying it. <laughs> I didn't want to cry. I was like, I'm not going to cry through this whole thing. But And so I just totally took my time. And I thought, who cares about NBC? And who cares about all the media people that have to wait an extra hour? <laughs> like, I just, I, I felt like I first did it for her. Just like really, really enjoyed it. And then like it comes back to being the best gift for me was that I took so long <laughs> and I ran around the track and I like waved to every American flag and I saw every single person that came to that track to see me, you know? And it was like such a funny, like amazing gift that she gave to me was like the reminder. Don't forget in the midst of all this craziness that this is something that you've wanted your whole life. So really take a moment and experience all of it. 
that was that was really special that she she gave me that permission to like really take it in and take my time and enjoy it. Probably the biggest question that I get after the Olympic Games is if I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and I have no plans to hang up the spikes anytime soon. She's done wonderful things so far, but I'm pretty superstitious about feeling settled with that or satisfied with that. I'd rather look forward and say, what can we do in the next four or five years? Um, I'd love, love to make it um, to another Olympic Games. It'd be really fun to race through 2020. But before that, I have a lot of goals along the way. And it starts with the next season, which is 2017. I, I think she can run under two minutes. I'm confident of that. She needs some better opportunities. I still think that she can run a couple seconds faster at 1500. It's gonna take a, a pretty perfect scenario. I still think I can get faster. So I think that's my, my really big goal, is to still PR in the 1500 meters. We don't think she's done running fast at, at anything. We don't think she's done contending for titles. I'd love, love uh, to be in London on the starting line of the final and give everyone another run for their money at the World Championships. We're looking forward more than looking back. Ask me in 22. <laughs>